Hello everyone. Thanks for joining me for another video. Uh, I've brought you to one of my favourite little spots today. I don't know if you can hear that. The uh, the huskies are howling at the husky farm. Yeah, where I work, it's 40 minutes walk that way. So this is a nice place to come after work to spend the night. And I can still get to work in the morning, which uh, isn't an issue because I've got the day off tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, nice little spot, lake over there, uh, some fish in it, a few pike, not much, but yeah, nice place. Uh, I'm smoke bathing at the moment, I've got my little firebox here, uh, of course being in Lapland, there's lots of mosquitoes at the moment, and uh, I've got no mosquito repellent, so I have to rely on the smoke. Uh, right, the point of the video, this little knife, it's the Tarava Mini Boko. Uh, so, the first video I ever had, or the first video I ever did, was a review of this knife. And uh, it got rather a lot of views. I think I'm on uh, 1,400 now. Uh, so, it was my first video, so it was a little bit ropey. I thought I'd go over it again. Uh, also, I've had a little bit more use of the knife, uh, so it's always better to review a product that you're familiar with. Uh, so, yeah, it's the smaller brother of this beast. This is the Tarava Yakaripoko 140. There's also a 110. This is in stainless steel. I forget which stainless steel they use, but the, uh, the carbon steel is 80 CRV2 which is quite a quite a common Scandinavian steel, uh, particularly in Finland. Uh, these are actually made uh, by Laurin Metalli or, or Lauri. Uh, you can uh, you can buy a lot of blade blanks from them. Uh, all of the knife makers around here who like to put handles on knives and sell them, they all use Lauri blades. Uh, so they're yeah. It's decent steel and they're quite good and also quite reasonable. You can only buy either of these, either of these knives from uh, from Varusteleka, uh, a company based in Helsinki. Uh, they've got a web shop. They sell all kinds of army surplus. It's a really, really good place to uh, go and buy bits and pieces. So they also sell a scrammer, which is an uh, absolute beast of a knife. It's it's huge. It'll uh, yeah, take the place of a, of a Kukri or a Leogu. So, back to this. The differences between these, apart from the obvious, <laughs> the size. If you look at the size of the handle, yeah, this actually fits a lot more comfortably in your hand. Uh, it's got like a rubberized overmold. It's uh, overmold, well, a rubberized handle. Uh, really, really very grippy, very comfortable in your hand. This is the same. There's a little bit of jimping on there. That's one little difference I've just noticed now. Uh, but if you see where that ends in your hand and your hand closes over the little lanyard hole, it's uh, not not quite as comfortable. But yeah, it's still. It's, it's, still works pretty well it's uh it's not going to really give you any serious hot spots it's, it's comfortable to use so the the shape of the blades also a little bit different uh yeah so okay so when i bought this there was actually no sheath option available. But now you can buy a sheath with it. And the sheath that you get is pretty much the same as the one for the Yakari Poco. But it's just a, just obviously smaller. So you've got that clip there, which the retention without the clip is pretty damn good. But you clip that closed, and uh, it's going absolutely nowhere unless you really force it. So 
Yeah, really well made, really nice looking sheath. So, as if you buy the Mini Poco, I, I just made something uh, out of a bit of leather. Uh, but I really would strongly recommend that you buy it with the sheath, because the sheath is excellent. Right, so, let's go and have a look what this little guy can do. Okay, so, first off, ferro rod. If you look at the back there, you can see they've ground it off at quite a strange angle. I think the idea is uh, is to take off the coating so you've got something to strike a ferro rod with. So uh, you have to get exactly the right angle. So as if you use this with a ferro rod all the time, yeah, you get used to finding the angle. But I use lots of different knives and uh, the stainless steel version has got a nice 90 degree spine. So for me, that is much, much easier. You know, this, this is not the only knife I use. In fact, I, uh, yeah. I generally just use a mora, you know, uh, yeah. So in my last video, I was throwing lots and lots of sparks off this little knife with a piece of flint. Today, it doesn't seem to be working and I'm not going to keep on going forever. I'm uh, just going to get <laughs> make some smoke with this knife. So I'm, I'm not sure what the issue was there, but uh, if anyone's got any potential explanations, please let me know. But in the past when I've tried, this works great at throwing sparks uh, off a piece of flint. Uh, we don't actually have flint here, we have quartz. Uh, I've got flint with me that I've brought from England because it works much better. Uh, yeah. So what I'm making, just so as you can see this little knife in action, is what's known as the Siberian Deadfall Trap. It's completely new to me. I first saw it in uh, Tromso Polo Museum. And uh, a nice Norwegian gentleman explained it to me in uh, quite a bit more depth. It was used for trapping everything from ermine to uh, to arctic foxes and it was in quite common use in northern Nor Norway and presumably here too uh, up until about the 1980s so uh, never made one of these before so let's <laughs> let's hope that it works Uh, I've just had to use this for something else. Uh, I've just had to use it to modify my tripod. I bought a cheap, nasty tripod from eBay. And, uh, yeah, it just uh, dropped my phone. So, 
yeah, always good to have a knife for all kinds of things. Right, so, on with the trap. I'm not intending on catching anything. I just want to see as if I can make one of these little trap systems that works. These logs still have branches attached to them and as if I really wanted to catch something I'd rather have something with a flat carved on each log but I think for the purposes of a demonstration of the mechanism I think this should work just fine let's see Also, another thing is with the wood being rotten, that's buried itself in quite deep. Obviously, as if I had less of a point on there, it would uh, probably work better with a rotten log. It would probably work better this way, between a pair of rocks, I'd guess. Just for the hell of it, let's try it upside down. Okay, so I'm going to make myself one more cup of coffee and then I'm going to go for a hike. Okay, so conclusion with the uh, Siberian deadfall trap and uh, yeah, the same would apply to a figure of four. Is, uh, as if you have a sharp point, you don't want to put it on something soft like the ground or a or a rotten log. Uh, on rocks that should work fine. But I didn't expect it to fall straight because of all of the branches, but it did seem to stick on that. That didn't fall over as readily as I would have liked. Right, so what was the subject of the video again? Yeah, it was intended to be all about this little guy. Uh, so... It's uh, 3.25 millimetres thick, 85 millimetres long, so that'd be round about round about three and a half inches. Uh, handles a little bit too short for my liking. Uh, if you've got that little lanyard there, it's a full tang. Uh, with it being a with it being a concealed tang, you can't really you can't really see how thick it is, but. Uh, 
yeah, on the website they've actually got a bear tang version of this and uh, yeah the tang is it, you can't call it a steak tang it's a full tang knife uh, presumably the same with the yekari poko uh, yeah I pronounce it different every time I say it don't I uh, uh, yeah a couple of little differences this one's got a little sharpening choil down at the bottom this one hasn't this one's a bit thicker this is uh, 4.2 millimeters uh, yeah two different sizes 140 110 so that would be what I'm guessing about four and a half inches and about five and three quarter inches uh, I, I don't know I, I work mostly with metric so yeah so they make decent knives 80 CRV2 I think is a really a really good steel and yeah and they're pretty good value for money and the sheaths are excellent okay well thank you very much for watching and uh, I'm gonna get myself a coffee enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you again next time bye for now